farmhouse friends and welcome back to Bloom Well Home and Garden. If you are new here, my name is Kim. We are all about home and garden DIYs, low budget living. If these are a few of your favorite things, please give this video a thumbs up. Now's a great time to hit subscribe and join the farmhouse family. We would love to have you. I love sharing inspiration on this channel and I love all the love and support that comes from my community and we'd love to have you here with us as well. Today it's part two of He Said It's a She Shed. And now that the build is over, I just want to give my guys a great big thank you for helping me. I could not have accomplished this build by myself, that's for sure. If you missed out on how we went from a small shed to a big shed and all of that, I'm going to link part one down below so that you can get caught up and follow along with us. But today, I want to put some of my own finishing touches on the shed. And since the build video, we talked it over and decided that this is going to be a dual purpose shed. And I will fill you in more about that as we go along. So I have to do a lot of tweaking from what the original thoughts were. You know, I've been working for a couple weeks now on what I was going to do in this shed and that suddenly changed and so I'm just going to kind of be winging it as we go and sharing that with you so stay tuned for that. I've also done a Dollar Tree haul because we're going to get in there and get organized. I'm hoping that provides a lot of low budget inspiration for you as well but let's jump in and get started with these upgrades and organization. The first thing I want to do for my shed is to add a flower box. This is some decking. Our friends gave us their old deck and I have a lot of wood and I just keep using it for projects. And this one is just going to be a flower box for the front of the shed. I've just cut some pieces and now I'm just gonna drill some drain holes so that the water can leak out and not rot the bottom. And this will be our little flower box for the front of the shed. I'm just going to go ahead and install that on the front of the shed. Next, the shed does not come with handles. So I picked up these handles real cheap, a two pack at I think it was Walmart. And I'm just going to install them on the shed so that I can open and close the doors real easy without getting my fingers pinched in between the doors. So if you get this shed, it will not come with handles, so you'll have to choose something if you want handles. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add a latch. Now this is not the latch that came with the shed. A latch does come, but I didn't like it. I like these kind because you can just pop them open. However, you always have to make sure when you are inside the shed that the door is propped open because if the door should swing shut, you will be locked inside your shed. Don't ask me how I know. It didn't happen with the shed, but that has happened before. And there you have it. Those are my outdoor improvements. Now I'm just going to take you on the inside and give you a tour. It comes with this shelf on the right side and also on the left side of the shed, there is this top shelf. It is, it runs the length of the, the shed and then there is this wonderful pegboard and then finally another shelf, which is actually a workbench. And this workbench measures 17 and a half inches deep. So it is a really nice workbench. The next interior project I want to mention is that the shelves I was just talking about, the workbench and the floor are all made of this pressed particle board and it is not easy to clean and it is not easy to keep spills wiped up. So I'm going to go ahead and on all of those surfaces, I am going to lay down a vinyl flooring so that I can protect it. Also, this edging of the shelf is blue and I'm gonna go ahead and paint that so you don't see that it is blue. And I just wanted to mention that these shelves, the pegboard and the workbench, were the main reason I chose this specific model of shed. Now this is the flooring I'm using. It is a barn wood style in a fawn color and the color is Smoky Mountain Fawn. 
coupon and I did get this from Lowe's and I will try to link it down below. So here is the example of how this will look when I put it up there, but I'm going to paint it the edge of the white vinyl that is going to be showing as well. The next upgrade I want to mention is on these two back panels on the back wall and one spot here on the side wall, we are going to be installing more windows and we ordered these windows from the factory where these sheds are built because we wanted them to be an exact match and they were less expensive than Lowe's. They were the correct size and it only took a week to get them rather than six weeks. So the first thing I want to do before I get started with moving things in and out is I want to measure the windows and where they're going to go so that I have a visual aid when I'm working in here and remember not to put things here where the windows are going to be going. So I'm measuring that all out and now I'm ready to roll out my vinyl and start measuring off the sizes I need for each one of the surfaces I'm going to cover and get ready to start cutting my vinyl. If you remember back in the first video when I showed when the shed kit arrived on the trailer and how well it was packed in there, well sometimes they pack in extra wood so it acts as spacers. Some of the wood you actually use for supports while you're building and then you don't need it anymore. So I was happy to have some of this leftover wood for projects and what I'm doing here is I'm adding some some wood between the spacers or the support beams of the shed because the walls that you see are actually just the outside siding. So you really can't drill through it or hang anything. And so I wanted a place where I could hang things and if you were going to finish off your shed, you would do it like this. Now this is the board I used when I went ahead and laid out my linoleum and I left the board outside in the rain overnight and the board got warped and you can see here it's really warped it wasn't good to use for any other projects but for this shed it 
it's going to work out just fine. So this is going to be a great area so I can hang some things and use it to organize other things that I just want to hang on a wall. It also worked out on this day that he had some time to go ahead and help me with the windows. So we are going ahead and cutting out where we wanted to put the windows. And you can see here as the wood drops away, it brings in so much light to have these windows. So it also dropped the temperature about 20 degrees in the shed. So that was wonderful having these extra windows. Now I'm going to use some more of that spacer board and go ahead and start another project over here on this wall. I want to add some wood so I can add a pegboard. I found this old piece of pegboard in the barn and so I'm going to go ahead and install this pegboard here so I have some extra room to hang things. And while I'm installing this, this is a good time to tell you why the shed has become dual purpose. The shed is not only going to be a spot for a garden shed which has grown from a 6x8 shed just to put a few rakes and shovels in, but the entire garden shed and it is also going to house the tools that I need on a daily basis. Now, as some of you know, our grandfather lives with us now, and this is a funny, yeah, a little bit of a sad story. He has dementia. He's in his 80s, and he likes to go out and piddle around in the barn, and it's great for him to get out there and do things, but every once in a while, like every few days, he wants to organize things and he will go out in the barn and he will start organizing tools and many times he will organize them and move them and he doesn't know where they are and we don't know where they are and so it's kind of like a treasure hunt every time you want to do a project and being that I do so many DIYs I have to go looking for and tools and sometimes I can't find them. Some the tools we so haven't even found yet. When I need so to use them and I don't have to go looking for this them. shed is a place where I can bring Keeping my tools, the tools, tools, tools I use the, the most, to the barn, but have them the here. I can put a lock on the door and, like and I know where they are, these are not when I need them. Items, either for organization or for tools because I don't do big heavy projects and when I do I can use the bigger tools that we have available. But these are just a few things that I needed for organization in the shed. So let me show you and you'll know where it is when I'm putting it away where it came from. And that might answer your questions in the video already. So first of all, I do not have electricity in the shed yet. That is on the schedule, but it's going to be a while, like everything is backed up these days. So the barn is way over there, as you know, and we have to trench a line over here. So in the meantime, I'm okay with running an extension cord if I wanna do cutting over here, but for the most part, I really don't need electricity yet. I did pick up a few things. If I have to come out at night, I got this little light switch from the Dollar Tree. Let me see, it's pretty bright. I don't know if you can see it. It's a light tap switch, and that will be helpful to me if I have to come out at night and get something, just tap it on. And then also, I got three of these same tap lights. I got these to put under the shelf of my workbench so that it will shine down on the workbench when I'm working. For organization, you can't beat their bins. I think I got six of these white bins and they are the bins with the holes in them. And if you don't like them white, you can always spray paint them. I often do spray paint them like this. I spray painted these little bins. They were green, bright green. I wanted them black, so I spray painted. I took out the drawers and I also popped these off and I spray painted those. So I have two of these little bins and they are perfect for little screws and nails and hooks and that kind of thing. I also picked up these tool holders. They are incredible and I've seen others use them so for a buck for five of them I 
couldn't pass that up there. I also picked up a couple of these little bins from the Dollar Tree. They are awesome in storing little things. I have two of those. Tool wise from the Dollar Tree, I picked up another tape measure. A dollar for a tape measure and this is 16 feet. These are great to have in your purse if you're going somewhere and you like I always have these in my purse if I'm going to a garage sale or something thrifting or going to an antique sale. If I have a space, I need I need to know dimensions. I always carry one of these with me. So I wanted an extra one to have in the shed. I picked up some more screwdrivers. You can never have enough screwdrivers. And these are just, they're Dollar Tree, but we've used them before. And I've given them as gifts to our grandchildren and they use them and they're not bad for a buck. So I got those. I also picked up a little knife craft knife set that is great to have in there. I picked up some wire brushes. I use these a lot. So three brushes for a dollar is a great price. Zip ties at the dollar store is a huge bang for your buck. So I always pick up strips when I go to the Dollar Tree, always. I also picked up, this was in the cooking section and it is a scraper and it is great even when you're crafting or working outside, it, whether it's gardening or a DIY project. These are great and it also has a measure on the side. I also picked up this easel. It's a dollar at the dollar store. And when you're working on a project and you have your instructions, it's always great. I you put a little piece of wood or a notebook or anything you like here and it helps keep it handy you can glance over at it while you're working i picked up some cork board so i can also stab with little push points little important pieces of papers or notes i need and the last thing i picked up from the dollar tree is this calendar because gardening from august through november is huge and there are so many things that i need to do and I learned this from Martha Stewart a long, long time ago that you schedule those things that you need to get done because there is so much more to do even after the harvest. There's you know, plants to pull and soil to amend and till. There's just so many things to do in the gardening season after you harvest. So from now through the end of harvest, I have a calendar and it will be full here shortly of all the things that I want to keep up on and it's great to have in the garden shed when I'm working and I go out there and I know there's things I need to do and I have the dates and I know when they need to be done by that is a huge blessing to keep organized in the garden so moving on my next stop was Harbor Freight and I picked up mainly tools from Harbor Freight picked up a few saws I have this compass saw and it was just a few dollars oh wait let me back up from the Dollar Tree I got this little saw and we've used these a few times and they're pretty handy. They're, it, it's, it's not a top name that you would get at a tool store or even Lowe's or Home Depot. It's a Dollar Tree saw, but it works. So for a dollar, just to have in my shed if I need to make a quick cut real quick, you know, I'm making steaks for the garden or whatever, it's great to have. So. That went with the Dollar Tree. Now we have this 12 inch compass saw that I got from Harbor Freight. Got a six inch coping saw. These are real handy and you can cut different angles with it. So I use this a lot. So I picked up my own. I also picked up a four inch magnetic tray. That is really handy to have when you're obviously you know, you're putting your screws and nuts on there so you don't lose them. Also picked up, um, I think this was on sale for $5 at Harbor Freight. And again, they're not tot really expensive, heavy duty tools. We have these in the house and I use them for everything and I've never had a problem with them. So I just have these in the shed so I have some out here when I'm working. For organization, I picked up one of these to go in my pegboard. It's to hold your screwdrivers and items like that also grabbed a handful of their really cheap knives. I use these every day on so many things in the garden, when I'm working in the house cutting boxes, 
These are everywhere and every time I go to Harbor Freight, I grab a handful. A new drill. Now this is just a $20 cheapy. It's an 18 volt. The battery's in the house charging. It's very light. And you know, I had shoulder surgery a long time ago. That arm is much weaker and am right-handed, right-armed, right side of the body. So I do use that side a lot. And you, drilling up here and for a, a long period of time pushing in, that shoulder gets really tired really easy. My battery on my drill was expired. It just wouldn't hold a charge anymore. So I just grabbed one of these $20 drills and it has been working. As you see in the video, I've been using it out here and it really works well for me. So I really like it. I'm glad I did pick this up. And to go with it, I did pick up from Harbor Freight just a small set of drill bits because if you have a drill, a driver and a drill, you need drill bits because I don't have my own. I always have to go hunt for my husband's tools and grab his. So I now have my own. My Walmart haul, I didn't get a whole lot. These were just organization things. I just got some cup holders. I got them in the large and the small and they are just, these are the one and a quarter and the other ones are seven eighths and they're the tiny ones. And I just got those because I plan on hanging things in here and I'll show you when I get to that part of the organization. And the other thing I picked up from Walmart were these pegboard hooks. And I thought this was a great deal. The last thing I have to show you is a thrifted item, vintage drawer holder. And the other two drawers are just over in the chicken area because I have the screws that I'm using over there on that project. But um, all the drawers work, they're all here. And this was a, it might've been white at one time, but it had yellowed with age. So again, I just pulled out all the drawers, hit it with some black satin spray paint, and there it is. It's gonna be so very handy in my little shed. So there is my haul. Like I already said, I did have some bins and boxes and things that I'm gonna be using in there, but let's get in there, get cleaned up. Yesterday we got the windows in and that put sawdust everywhere. I'm gonna head back in, get it all cleaned up, and then we're gonna start getting organized. And that is the most exciting part for me is to have everything where I need it to be and be organized. So let's do it. I started looking around for things that I could use for organization. I found these two shelves in our basement. They really weren't being used and I decided to tear them down a little bit because I wanted to use the space above them. I put them up here and I realized they are a little too tall so I moved it over here to under the window and I really like that and now I have three shelves all the same size so this is going to work for me. 
Before we get too far with the shed organization, I wanted to bring you over to the lean-to. And remember, this is where my gardening supplies are that are going in the shed. And also over here, I have this area and I have these drawers. And every time I take something apart, or I find a screw or a nail, I throw them in the, this drawer so I can save them for another project. There's tools in here. These light bulbs actually go over in the chicken coop supplies, but I have hardware and string and straps. I literally have drawer after drawer of who's it's and what's it's, and I have had it on my list since early spring to get all these drawers sorted and divided because I just love organization. Up here I have some of my favorite baskets that I like to use for decor and uh, it's blurring because it's so messy but I have been sorting that's why it's so messy but this is where my gardening was and recently all of the Christmas decor came from the barn over here to make room in the barn for grandpa's things and so again it got shoved over here and i'm just sorting and taking what will go to the shed and then there will be some things that i'm just going to get rid of but over here back at the shed i am working on the pegboard organizing it for my workspace these little cup holders i'm using to install the little lights i got from the dollar tree and I'm just going to organize my tools in a way that makes them handy and useful. Now I left the label on this can so you can see that these are all food cans at one time and I like to paint them and wrap twine around them and do things with them. When I was younger, I had them in my camper for utensils. You could do all kinds of things that you could just find around your house and make useful. I'm going to use these to hold all the screwdrivers and the brushes that I purchased at the Dollar Tree as well, just to keep them handy. friends I was almost done but then I just kept looking at the mildew on this board now I told you I'd left this board outside in the rain and it got mildewy as well as warped I did give it a really good scrub down with a bleach solution and that should have taken care of it but the stains are still there and I just couldn't live with it that way so I got out the paint and went to town just painting this changing it up so that it looks a little better. While my paint was drying, I started making many of my trips back and forth to the lean-to to bring back all the things that I wanted to bring to the shed. And now that my board was dry, I wanted to give it a border. I wanted to make it look kind of like a bulletin board or a chalkboard. So I had some more of the vinyl that I used on all the surfaces and I cut it into strips and used some E6000 and created a border to go around the top portion of the board. Now using my larger size cup hook, I'm going to install one on the left side of the left window and I'm going to put one on the right side of the right window and I'm going to string across some twine and add some clothespins.
friends, thanks so much for coming along for this shed organization. And if you can tell how excited I am to have my garden tools so close to the garden, give this a thumbs up and share this video with anyone who loves organization. Thank you so much for coming by. Everyone be safe and be well until next time. I will go ahead and leave a few more videos if you'd like to follow along more on the farmhouse journey.